Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to be talking about strategies for big simulations, long simulations, and, and large simulation results files. So I have here an example sim. It's a phase shift uh, full, uh, full bridge DC power supply. Total time 150 milliseconds here at a 20 nanosecond time step. And we can see my sim result here is getting close to 1.5 gigabytes. So this uh, file will be too big for PSIM to load by itself. So if we try and load in any of the results files here, if we hit OK, uh, this oversampled data uh, window pops up. So what this means is, is if we keep opening these uh, waveforms, is we're not going to be loading every single data point that was saved. So we're not. So the the original simulation was saving a data point every 20 nanoseconds. And what the um, oversampled data means is it's pulling in every few data points instead. Um, we have the option though of going to full data, which means so we see here all the data that we can look at. If we go to full data, it's just going to select the, the signals that we had already identified, and now we can look at these in full detail. So this will be down to a 20 nanosecond uh, resolution. Okay, so that's how uh, PSIM handles a really big simulation file. Uh, some things to note with when dealing with large simulations, you should check to make sure that you're saving simulation results in binary format and you're also limiting your output buffer size. So what this does is it makes PSIM write to, to the disk every 200 megabytes of simulation. If this, otherwise the results get stored in dynamic memory and the simulation can start to bog down, especially when you start pulling the results out as you start running out of, of, of RAM. So uh, limiting the output buffer will will make PSIM dump to disk and it, you're not losing any simulation fidelity and it might make it run a couple seconds longer, but it's a, a good thing to be doing um, just in general as well. Okay, so looking then at the data there. So the other thing uh, one can do is uh, play with these settings in here. So there's a couple settings to look at. There's print step and there's load flag and save flag. So what print step does um, is it's going to automatically save. Uh, so we're simulating at 20 nanoseconds. Print step at one means we're saving a data point every 20 nanoseconds. If we change print step to two, that means we're going to be simulating at 20 nanoseconds, but we're only going to be saving every other data point. So we'll get a data point every 40 nanoseconds. So that's what print step does. And the last thing to talk about is the load and save flag. These load and save initial conditions for us. So uh, it might be useful in a simulation like this. Let's just zoom in at the, at the beginning here. So there is a transient response before it hits steady state. So maybe we're interested in seeing um, what happens to the simulation at uh, during steady state and we don't want to simulate the transient response over and over and over again. So to get past that point, we could do this so we can see that that's happening. Uh, if we measure here, it hits steady state by about two milliseconds. So what we can do is we can change this to two milliseconds. We can set up the save flag as one. And when we run this simulation now, we're going to get, uh, so we can see the output results here. Let's just close that other windows down. So we, here's our uh, output and we're hitting uh, steady state. We can see this SSF file has been created now. What the SSF file is saying is it's giving us the uh, conditions of the simulation at two milliseconds. Uh, and so all the voltages and currents are saved in the simulation. And so when we run a new simulation, say we want to go from steady state to um, and watch the next two milliseconds and maybe you know change the load or, or do something like that, we can change this from two milliseconds and let's go to four milliseconds now. So we'll run another two milliseconds and we'll use the load flag and we'll set the save flag to zero. So now what was going to happen is every simulation we run is going to start at two milliseconds um, and it'll load all that stuff in and it'll run to the next, to the end time. So let's run this simulation now. And now we can see we've got from two milliseconds until four milliseconds up here. So that's how the load and save flag works. So we can, instead of running a really one really long simulations, we could break a simulation down into small simulation steps. Okay, so that's some uh, strategies for dealing with large simulations and long simulations, how to break them down and make sure that you're able to use your results uh, successfully. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please check back again for more videos.